Yeah. What you saw in the entertainment industry, right, was people just zip it. Yes. You know, they were not prepared to challenge the narrative. And you say that actually by speaking out and being open about uh, your opposition to many COVID policies, it's actually gained you more followers uh, in the UK than at any point in the past 20 years. So commercially, this has actually worked for you. Is that right? Well, it's... Uh, it's a, yes, it's, a, it's beginning it's to. It's a curate's egg. It's a bit of, you know, yes. good and bad. Yeah, the first two years were... It was just tumbleweed across my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody would speak to us. And then that's changed. In the last nine months, that's changed. So um, the first change was actually being approached to do the book, um, that, which was last year. And then in terms of gigs and stuff, we're now getting offers for next year. People who refused to speak to us last year now are speaking to us. And we've also gained a whole network of people who are very, very supportive from the, the position we decided to take. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You imply in the book that a lot of modern artists are bought in some way... Yes. Can you just explain what you mean by that? Well, I, th I think if you're, if you're part of a machine of any kind, um, you have to watch what you say. Yeah. Because, there, you know, there's, sometimes there's a clause about bringing the machine, whatever, the record company or the publisher, whatever it is, into disrepute, which can actually mean anything. And there was a case some years ago where after 9-11, a, a, a boy band was on tour in Canada. And they, asked the they simply asked the question, why do they hate us so much? That was the question. And they had to retract that and apologise. Yeah. Because yeah, their that. promoter said the gigs are off and this, mm. you apologise. So you've got to be... The reason we are irritating, I think, sometimes, <laughs> is because <laughs> we're independent and we, yeah. we just say... So you answer to no-one? No, That's we right. don't. No, There's no-one no telling you, oh, I wish you hadn't tweeted that from your Fred's account, I, I wish you hadn't been so outspoken about lockdowns. No-one. No, we've never had that. No, I mean, we, no. We, get, we get guidance a little bit from our, um, our PR, Jenny Roberts. Yeah. Um, but she's a very, very similar mindset to us. So yeah. it's just, it's more to do with... We don't really get told off. We just say, you know, we, we discuss what we may or may not tweet and occasionally you know, I've, I've learned not to tweet past wine time you know because <laughs> that, that's not always the brightest thing to do exactly um, so we've learned a couple of lessons over the last couple of years but um generally speaking we yeah we just do we kind of please ourselves but we try not to be reckless and so we try not to be irresponsible yeah. some people would up would argue we have been that's their opinion and not ours yeah exactly yeah, yeah. but don't you think those people, because remember, I, I was in the same camp yes. and we were all derided, weren't yes, we? we were. Yeah. Called yes, we were. COVID idiots, yeah. uh, deniers, COVID deniers. I mean, oh, no. how bizarre we've all had COVID. Yeah. What were we ever denying? I, I, I don't get that. Anti vax, yeah. that's yeah. another thing that's been thrown at yeah. all of us. Yeah. But, but don't you think now the narrative is finally shifting? Too it, late, it is but, but it is shifting. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is. We, we notice that from the mail we get um, on, um, on, on uh, with the centre right. So, Fred, the, the sort of messages we get on Twitter, that, that shift has changed. There's still the bots out there, but overall, the, the, the general narrative is, is shifting a little bit. Mm. It is, it, it, and generally, the, the, the language is kinder and more tolerant than it well, was. Also, one thing we found when we did, we went on, the, on a few sort of on the demos and stuff. One of the things about that is people who don't understand the demo thing thought that it was about changing official policy. It was never really about that for me. It was it was, it was showing solidarity with people who felt the same. And I yes. remember talking to one elderly lady who was from Southampton, and she found going to the demos incredibly invigorating because she suddenly realised that she wasn't the only one who thought like she thought. Mm. And this, obviously that's going back about 18 months now, mm. so that situation's changed. But I think there was a misunderstanding. It's the same as you say, Dan, with the anti-vaxxer thing. That it's a, it's these expressions, rather like the term racist or homophobe, mm. they, these are thrown out far too casually. Yeah. And, uh, and we've, I'm, we've had more vaccinations than I care to think of. I just felt there was something... It's a bit like Lee Oliver said. It was just a gut feeling. It just didn't feel didn't right. Feel right no. Yeah, that's all it was. And you should, as an individual, you should better make that choice. Absolutely. Yep. And that doesn't feel right for me. I'm not well, doing it. Yeah. Well, I, I wonder, don't you sometimes, because I know I do, don't you sometimes feel depressed by the state of the entertainment industry? Because yes. the mm. whole point when I was growing up, and if you look back further to that, to the 60s and 70s, you know, musicians, artists are meant to be counterculture. Yes, yes. they are. And... and which high-profile musicians can you look at yeah. over the past two years and say, you challenged the narrative, yes. you spoke out against official dim, yeah. you challenged the government, virtually none. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, the, I suppose you have to say Van Morrison, Eric Clapton... Yes. Yeah. Uh, Hi Eros, yeah. you know, and there's... The, the, Buster Rhymes. Yeah, Buster Rhymes. There's a few yeah. people, and yeah. Pit, Pitbull. Yeah. Uh, there's and a few Matt Howe. Yeah, uh, Hoy. 
Oh, yes, who of course lost, yeah, lost yeah. his job in UB40. Yes. But, but the point is, we, we can ha count them probably on two hands. Yes, we can. Yes, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it is slim pickings. And um, the, the, um, what, what, I won't mention bands, but what was weird is that we were getting texts and messages from some band members saying, good, you know, well keep done, speak well out, done, you know. keep it out. And the very next week, they're playing a Vax only gig. Yeah. I'm going, what are you doing, man? I think, that, yeah. I th I think the level of... Um, we under when, I was saying to Fred today, if you, if you take your, your mind back to, say, three years ago and actually imagine in your head where we are now and the things that have changed since then, yeah. the degree to which we've become frightened of each other, the degree to which we actually think words like quarantine have entered the... Yeah, lockdown. Lockdown, entered the national it's language. it's normal. It, yes, like it's normal. And it's not normal. And, no, it's, it's just, and we not, shouldn't just accept it. Exactly. No, I agree. And, the other week agree. I was watching... Um, uh, as Black Sabbath concert from 1982, and it was one huge mosh pit. It was absolutely brilliant, and Ozzy was just yeah, the band were yeah. kicking. I mean, really, really good. And um, and I looked at it and thought, how would that happen now? No. Yeah. How would that happen now? Because everybody's so afraid afraid of each other. Yeah, they are. Um, which, is, which is a great tragedy. You know, uh, look, got to talk about the music. Yeah, of course. Okay. Because these samples are keeping you right up the yes. charts. So, so you had Taylor Swift, Drake. And I believe the most recent is Beyonce yes. right, on, on her new album. So, so how does it work? Does Beyonce have to pick up the phone and, uh, and ask your permission, <laughs> or can she just do this and then pay you lots of money? What's the process? How does the pro it happen? It Yeah, the process yeah. with Taylor Swift and Drake is they approached our publishers. They sent us demos uh, because these are co-writes. These aren't samples, these yep. are co-writes. And so that was all fine. The Beyonce, we, I didn't know about it until I saw it in the press. Really? So, <laughs> so I, did, I didn't know that was happening. And, and uh, maybe our publishers knew. I, I don't know what happened there because we weren't privy do to you that. Like, do you like the song? Yeah, it's all right. I, I'm not mad about that I one think so much. Drake's was the best. Yeah, I really liked the Drake record. Yeah. I thought he did a really good version. Also, and, and I thought, I thought um, uh, Look What You Made Me Do was a good track. Also, as well. that kind of quick, quickly said, on, on the, on the Beyoncé track, there are 22 writers. I mean, I mm. mean, how it takes 22 people to write a terrible track like that. <laughs> <laughs> the only good part, the only good part of the Beyoncé track is our part. <laughs> the rest of it is rubbish. OK, so, 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 so you're not giving a ringing endorsement to the Beyoncé <laughs> no. track. But Drake, but, yeah, Drake was cool. But you still have to, like, she still has to pay you, right? You, oh, yeah. you, yes. you get the money from it, regardless. Yes. yes. Yeah, we won't, there are 22 writers on this, so we won't hold our breath. <laughs> you know, it might pay for the petrol home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs>